Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Red Raptor Rights as I react to episode 4 of Prehistoric Planet. Now, for my initial thoughts, I think episode 4 is exactly what it needed to be. I won't keep this too long, that's my hot take, straight to the point. After 3 episodes, we've started to see some of the same things, a lot of those mating rituals, surviving as a child, that sort of thing, and it's been repeated quite a bit. But now, we get new creative takes on old stories. So the show is getting creative, taking things that we are already familiar with, and just adding a new spin to it to keep the series new, keep it feeling fresh, keep it engaging. Which I think it really works in this episode. I definitely like the hunting shown in this episode. Hunting, something we've seen a thousand times in these dinosaur documentaries and paleo shows, whatever you want to call it. It's just such a common thing at this point. But Ice Worlds takes a new approach to it with the Troodon, or Troodontid, sorry, Troodon is an invalid wastebasket taxon that shouldn't be used. So I'm glad that they said Troodontid in this instance. We see it spreading forest fires, and that scares off its smaller prey. The prey scurries around and then makes them an easy meal for the Troodontid. This is a cool and welcome addition because this is something we see in nature today. There are birds of prey that will find fires and then start spreading them around to scare off the little critters that they're looking to eat. So, good addition. And also, between the Nanuksaurus and the Pachyrhinosaurus, it wasn't a chase scene or just battle to the death. No, it was a stalemate war of attrition during the freezing cold and a blizzard. The Nanuksaurus surrounded a herd of Pachyrhinosaurus who were standing their ground, and it was just to see who caves first. A very great spin on a typical battle, Tyrannosaurid versus Ceratopsian, something we have not seen before, at least I haven't so far. And then, again I said mating is something that we've seen a lot in this show, but Ice Worlds takes a fun spin on it where we see Ornithomimus males preparing nests to attract females. We don't even see the females, which is nice. <laughs> based, based red raptor rights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't even see the females. It's just a competition between the males to see who can build the best nest. And then they start stealing the plant matter from other Ornithomimus to decorate and build up their own nest. So it wasn't just, oh, let me attract a mate and then mate <laughs> we got that that uh romance scene in the last episode no this is more of a competition so it keeps it fresh which i certainly appreciate since i just mentioned pachyrhinosaurus i guess i should keep talking about it so the pachyrhinosaurus here is easily one of the best pachy designs so far maybe close with much of the dinosaurs i think this one kind of just beats it out um very close with Prehistoric Kingdom, but considering this is P. Peritorum, and Prehistoric Kingdom's Peritorum is just this weird shaggy beast, um, this is probably my favorite so far. I like that it has some quills, some quills to keep it warm. Quills have been found on uh, its relatives like Cetacosaurus, so it makes sense that in a colder environment that they would use quills as a way to just keep a little bit warmer, but not to the extent where it's like a mammoth or something. <laughs> yeah, so it looked great, and I really appreciate um, that it didn't have a giant nose horn. I don't know why this is a thing that paleo documentaries do sometimes. We saw it in Jurassic Fight Club, and Amazing Dino World was just insane with it. I, I just have no idea why. It it's such a dumb thing to do. So... I mean, this should be the standard. It shouldn't be something I compliment. It should just be a given that Pachyrhinosaurus has a boss on its nose and not a big horn. But this is the world we're living in <laughs> where I have to compliment this. So hopefully from here on out, this is the standard. This is the norm. And we don't get a return of the stupid Aceratops. Uh, Ornithomimus looked really great. It basically resembled a big ostrich with that little Elvis coom on its head also. That was a neat touch. But even the noises they made were very ostrich-like. And considering that these are just 
Cortesis ostriches, yeah, it, it makes sense. <laughs> but they were covered in that shaggy down feathering with some wings too. And they were they were brightly colored males. Again, we didn't see the females really, so we don't know how they looked like in comparison. Probably would have been less brightly colored. So yeah, the Ornithomimus looked great. So I think the only other time we've seen Ornithomimus is in uh, Prehistoric Park. So best Ornithomimus, <laughs> since this one actually had feathers. And that's another thing, another positive with this series is sexual dimorphism. In birds, the males are usually more brightly colored uh, to attract females. And they have these bigger, grander, weirder display structures. Peacock's an obvious one. And we get that a lot here too. The males are most often much more brightly colored. There is evidence of this in pterosaurs, with pteranodon males being much larger and having longer crests, I guess you would call them, with the females being smaller, a little stub, stump on their head. So it's a neat addition too. Now, Nanuxaurus is an interesting one because Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus, which were larger, were given small quills across the body. Like, if you look closely, you can see them, but they don't stand out that much. But then the Nanuxaurus, this Arctic Tyrannosaurid, has like a full feathery coat covering its body, which I, I think is in the realm of possibility, considering that Eutyrannus, a much earlier Tyrannosauroid, was found with evidence of feathers. So it's possible that it comes back around here. It is in the realm of possibility, at least I think. But they are shown as small, like even smaller than Pachyrhinosaurus, which was a decently sized ceratopsian, but from what I can remember from my research from March of the Dinosaurs, uh, it has been suggested that Nanuxaurus can grow larger to approaching 30 feet, so kind of in the range of Gorgosaurus, Albertosaurus. So it was a little odd that they were this small, but this is what was initially thought of them, so I can see why they did it. Anyways, that's really all I have to say about this one. Um, it's very fun, it's very new, it takes these old ideas and makes them feel fresh, which is something you want in an episode 4, because you don't want audiences to feel like they're just repeating the same things over and over again. So in terms of all the episodes, this ooh, is either my second or first favorite, tied around there with Coasts. So let's see what episode 5 brings and if it can take that top spot. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.